Welcome, you're on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Targeted killings are bringing back the specter of migration from the Kashmir Valley. The government's claim was that the security situation in Kashmir is getting better. But the recent spate of attacks raises questions around that claim. Terrorists are clearly seeking to up the ante. How should the Indian state and the Indian people respond? That's my top focus on the news track. Record number of terrorist infiltrations. Unsettling rise and ambush attempt on forces. Big spate of terror assassinations targeting minorities. Sharp spike in number of encounters in the valley. Sudden violent flare up in Jammu and Kashmir. The big focus on News Track. There have been at least six encounters in the valley in the last two days. Three Lashkar e Taiba, the resistance front terrorists, were killed in the early hours today after an encounter broke out in Tulran village of Shopia district. One of the terrorists eliminated was Mukhtar Shah from Gandharbal, who killed a Bihari Pani Puri seller last week. Uh, the new uh, violence comes on the back of spiraling attacks on security forces and on citizens in Kashmir over the last few days. Hello, Yemtar Majaid, Andar Chibasamit, Oshuta Guzarish Karan, Busha DSP Imam Saab, Yeta Guzarish Karan, Kito Niru never surrender Kariu, Hatiatra Yepatar, Atkaru Kara, the never near to you mock din, Kitabar to Aram Sizingi Biazingi Jew. A dramatic appeal by forces to trap Shopia terrorists to surrender. On camera, a Jammu and Kashmir policeman urging the three hiding terrorists in Kashmiri language to lay down their weapons before a full-scale fire assault on Tuesday morning. Hours later, the troops breached the terror hideout, eliminating three heavily armed terrorists belonging to Pakistan based Lashkar e Taiba. One of those killed was terrorist Mukhtar Shah from Gandharbal, who earlier had killed a Bihari Pani Puri seller, Virendra Paswan, in Srinagar as part of targeted killings of civilians. Not just Virendra Paswan, but two other civilians were shot dead in separate terror incidents in Jammu and Kashmir on that very same day, October the 5th. Police has now solved the two cases in which both the killers had been killed in the encounters. In one uh, incident, the Bandipura case, case has been resolved where the one civilian was killed on Tuesday and another now of the Virendra Paswan. Uh, who was the uh, Belpuri seller in the downtown area of Srinagar. The two other terrorists were identified as Danish Ahmed and Yavar Ahmed. Arms and ammunition have been recovered from the terrorists, say the Kashmir Zone Police. Shopia witnessed another encounter soon after. A joint team of the Jammu and Kashmir Police, Army and the Central Reserve Police Force killing two more terrorists. It was the fifth gunfight in 30 hours. Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat called it Pakistan's proxy war and asserted that forces are ready and in control. Sir, uh, what we've seen at the LOC yesterday is like a huge setback. How do you see How this now? Setback? Is the first time it's happening? How? But are these hard to inter terrorists, uh, uh, what's happening in Kashmir Valley, you targeting of minorities? You are, you are fighting a proxy war in the nation. Aren't we aware of it? And that there is a proxy war being perpetrated on you. This is what we are fighting, this is what we are prepared for. So it is an it is, it is act of terrorism that has happened. A total of 25 civilians have been killed by terrorists this year in JNK, with the highest numbers reported in Srinagar. What is concerning for the security agencies is that all killed militants are newly recruited and not more than one month old militants which were killed in these operations and that clearly indicates that fresh recruitment in the militant ranks has started in the Kashmir Valley. With Tarek Lohan Ashrafani, for India Today in Srinagar.
A record number of infiltrations, a rise in ambush attempts on our forces, sharp spike in the number of encounters and minorities being targeted in the valley yet again. Are all these terror activities connected? And more importantly, why have the last few weeks been so soaked in blood for Jammu and Kashmir? India today tries to decode the reasons for the sudden and sharp spurt in terror activities in the valley. A spate of terror assassinations targeting Kashmiri minorities. A record number of terrorist infiltrations across the LOC. An unsettling rise in ambush attempts on security forces. A sharp spike in the number of encounters in the Kashmir Valley. Two Pakistani terrorists captured alive, first in Uri and then in Delhi. And another exodus of non-Muslims from Srinagar. Even for this typically turbulent landscape, the last few weeks have been particularly blood-drenched in Jammu and Kashmir. The sudden flare-up in violence shattering the unsettled equilibrium and forcing two big questions. Are all these separate events connected? And why is this happening now? Let's try and answer those questions for you one by one. The simple answer to the first question is yes. All terror-related activity in Jammu and Kashmir is connected. The one big connection, of course, being sponsorship and logistics from Pakistan. But the second question is trickier. Why is this happening now? There are three parts to our answer. First, with Afghanistan now settling into the vice grip of Pakistan, there's much more elbow room for the ISI to focus terrorist activity on the western frontier with India. With the Haqqani network now calling the shots in Kabul, Pakistan no longer needs to look over its shoulder and can keep its gaze fixed on fanning tensions in Kashmir. Second, with winter coming, terror activity always sees a visible spike. The arrival of snows makes infiltrations and terror activity difficult and therefore groups like the Lashkar, jaish e mohammed and their fronts always ramp up tensions to replenish logistics and keep tensions high. And finally, third, India's festive season always presents itself as a major target for Pakistani terror groups. The arrest of a Pakistani terrorist in Delhi on Tuesday along with arms and ammunition suggests that terror groups are still hoping to cause devastation in the run-up to Diwali. And with public places of worship opening up to devotees, there's an even greater availability of targets. Combine these three broad factors and the spike in violence in Jammu and Kashmir begins to make sense. Also add the pressure being applied constantly by security forces on militant and terror groups and the imperative for the next big attack is at an all-time high on Pakistan's terror agencies. From the line of control to the Kashmiri hinterland to the valley, security forces remain on high alert with tensions unlikely to subside soon. Bureau Report, India Today. One of the big claims of the central government was that after the abrogation uh, or revocation of Article 370, the security situation in the Kashmir Valley had improved. But the recent spate in killings across Kashmir raise serious questions about that. Part of it linked to what's happening in Afghanistan, the ISI and the Pak Army being emboldened. But what should the Indian state do now? These targeted killings of civilians, Kashmiri pundits in particular being targeted, very, very troublesome. How should we be dealing with this situation? Joining me on this broadcast for a perspective from the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, its spokesperson Nalin Kohli, representing the National Conference is Irfa Jan. Uh, with us from the Congress is Charan Singh Sapra. I have uh, Lieutenant General B.S. Jaswal. He's been the former General Officer Commanding-in-Chief of the Northern Army Command. So he's commanded the Kashmir Valley and the entire Northern Army. 
Amit Raina joins us. He's a Kashmiri activist and a spokesperson for the roots in Kashmir. I want to go across to Nalin Kohli first. Nalin, one of the big claims of the government was that since the scrapping of Article 370, the situation in Jammu and Kashmir has got better than the past. But the killings of Makhanlal Bindru, Golga Pasela Videndra Paswan, Satinder Kaur, the principal and Deepak Chand and others raise serious questions about how valid those claims really are. I won't agree with your assessment, your question also, Rahul. Because A, of course these killings are terrible, nefarious, dastardly. But at the same time, you have to look at it in the overall context. Since the abrogation, has there not been a structured and a systematic elimination of terrorists? Has it not been? Have stone pelting happened in the manner that we used to see as a daily thing? Look at what used to be earlier. Stone pelting seemed to be the norm. Today, I mean, I can't recall an incident in several months. Earlier, it was on a daily basis. There used to be hampering of the operations of the security forces. Is it happening now? The security forces have been eliminating over 100 terrorists. They neutralized the top terrorists one after the other. So don't run down the success of the security forces, the police there. By just two, three, four, every incident of terrorism is terrible. And the state works overnight. The police forces, security agents work to stop it. But I think there is a whole narrative that is built that one incident happened and you run down the entire work done. And I'm not blaming the media. I'm saying there's a section that always tries to do that. And we have to even note today that a section of sympathizers who come up over ground will always have a question for the security forces for the intelligence agencies, for the government of the day, but never for the terrorists. The same set of people will not sit on TV and say, Burhan Mani was a terrorist, or an Afzal Guru was a terrorist. They will only say, "Give you know, we have to go to the cause of terrorists, we are sympathizers. No one, no one is saying and any I of that. Nalin, right one second. Now, first first no and foremost, Nalin, yes. we have zero no. sympathy for terrorists, okay? Point so number two. I'm no, talking about, not about sure, you. Sure, but I'm not talking about you. Sure, but I'm point number two, it isn't one incident. Five Jawans were killed. Yes. in an attack, yes. uh, in an ambush. I'm We've had I was Kashmiri uh, pundits being targeted. This at a time no. when the government was hoping to uh, send more Kashmiri pundits back to the valley. You asked That's Kashmiri pundits yes, that you. Uh, you, was, your, was your land or your no. property forcibly taken away from you? Several thousand responded saying that they wanted to go back and their land was taken away forcibly. When that process was being initiated, now we're seeing an exodus. Uh, it's being called Exodus 2.0. The few Kashmiri Pandit families who still stay there are fearful. I have spoken personally to uh, Kashmiri Pandit families who are in Kashmir. They are deeply that? fearful. And the effort that you were making of sending more Pandit families to the valley is being upturned by these terrorists. This is a, an alarming situation. We need to reflect very seriously on why it's Absolutely. happening. And more importantly, what do you intend to do to deal with it, Mr. Kohli? Absolutely. And in fact, Rahul, I'm thankful to you for that follow-up question. Because the first question was in one part, this is separate. And I think the answer lies in your question. The very fact that all this was happening, it is to defeat it to ensure that we don't have a return, which is what has been the religious targeting. And that was a clear attack on the Hindus who lived in Jammu Kashmir to move them out of the Kashmir Valley, to create out there a zone that would promote separatism and from separatism to extremism and from extremism to terrorism. That was the narrative. And this is to try and put a spoke there. It is also linked to the geopolitical situation, as you correctly pointed out in the beginning opening comments about Pakistan and its position of how it desperately wants to be on the table, somehow show its relevance, and somehow show it is a factor in this, which was being defeated. And Bal, Kord, Uri, all of those are factors in the Pakistani narrative taking a hit. Globally, also diplomatically, under the Prime Minister, under Prime Minister Modi's government, that isolation, the developments in Afghanistan. So all of these are factors that have come in. And what you're saying is a correct thing. The targeting over these last few incidents, and I'm not, I'm not trying to undermine any of these incidents. These are heart-rending, they are serious incidents, and they are incidents of concern. And it has to be addressed to defeat this plan also of the Pakistani agencies, of the terrorist network that is spawned by them, and beyond it. A network that is out there to somehow and somehow defeat Amit the Raina, Indian state. Give, give our viewers a sense of country. the mood in the Kashmiri Pandit community now. Because I'd seen reports saying that 4,000 plus Kashmiri Pandits 
are saying that the land was forcibly taken away from them. They wanted to go back or at least explore the possibility of going back. Now we are seeing a migration start once again even with the few Pandit families that are still there. You have been speaking to many Kashmiri Pandits in the valley. What are they making of these targeted killings and how would they like the government to address the current wave of violence? Uh, Rahul, uh, just a month back, I bought uh, land in Kashmir with a plan of settling back in spite of my family opposing it, my wife opposing it. And now my wife tells me, didn't I tell you it is not a place to go back? Now, the problem is <coughs> that while there are comparisons of 20 versus 8, uh, 20 from a certain community and 8 from a certain community, one needs to realize that there are only 4,000 Kashmiri Pandits in the valley and the 8 num number 8 is significant, especially when it becomes a targeted killing. When, when you are stopped, your I card being checked and then being uh, killed, it is a clear case of target killing and that's make that makes it more worrying, that reminds people of 1990. And the other thing uh, which is more worrying is that the government of Jammu and Kashmir and the central government, which should, uh, which did a fantastic job by abrogating Article 317.35a, did not take uh, the right course of action because from 1947 onwards uh, uh, to the exodus of 1890, the Vandama massacres, the Sangrampura massacre, and the multiple massacres that have happened, all were linked to jihad, and you cannot. You cannot fight jihad with development. If jihad and development were together, if jihad, if antidote to jihad was development, then we'd have not seen the Islamic insurgency across the globe, including the most developed nations on this planet. France, Europe, uh, UK, America, Australia, and even Afghanistan would have not happened because there was progress which was happening there. Uh, so you, uh, the central government failed to identify that that the antidote to jihad is not development. They will have to identify jihad, they will have to tackle jihad, and they will have to kill the jihad. There's enough radicalization in the valley. We, we Every year we hear that around 200 terrorists are only left, and every year there are 200 terrorists left. Even today there are 120 local terrorists. They may be getting support from Pakistan, but Pakistan is still finding people who are willing to get up, who know their shell life is only one month, who know that they may not survive after one month, are willing to get up, fight this jihad against India. Is this something which has not been tackled? Ahle Adi still runs more than 6,000 institutions, madrasa, schools, primary schools and colleges across Jammu and Kashmir, creating uh, uh, radicalization. Uh, amongst the youth, nothing has been done on that front. Okay, you General have... Jaswal, what's your reading of the current security situation in the Kashmir Valley? Why have uh, incidents of violence gone up so far, so sharply, not just against security forces, but also against uh, civilians, in particular Kashmiri Pandits and others were being targeted? There was relative calm, which led the government to claim that things were getting better after Article 370, the spate of attacks raise questions about that claim? Well, I think uh, what Nalin Kohli, Mr. Nalin Kohli, he had uh, spoken, that sums up everything. But in my perspective, this particular hype in terrorist activities, I'll just give you a figure before this. Up to 2020, there was a drop of 59% of terrorist activities. And the first part of 2021, there was another 31%. Suddenly, there is a high. The reason is multifold. Firstly, Pakistan is not happy with the kind of, uh, I would call, uh, uh, normalcy, which is uh, returned to the valley. It was giving hope for the Kashmiri pundits to go in. Secondly, Pakistan wants to take away its tag of sponsoring terrorist activities. That's the reason the TRF has replaced the LET. They want to show to the world, sorry, we are not involved, it's homegrown terrorism. Now, if that has to be uh, showcased in the world, you must hype up the activity. That's another reason. Thirdly, the religious divide, the religious divide which is there, they want to once again uh, bring in and uh, the Kashmiri pundits, now uh, the Prime Minister has given a package, etc. They don't want the Kashmiri pundits to come back. Neither Pakistan nor some of the uh, inmates in the valley, they do not want because they have taken the property, etc. They don't want this property to go away. So they want to carry out sensational attack. 
these are sensational. Even if two people are dead, of a particular commit, uh, community, it's a sensational attack. It doesn't need to kill... Uh, Charan Singh Sapra, since the like of Rahul Gandhi and the others in the Congress are raising questions about the security track record of the Modi Sarkar, this is an important point that's been made by General Jaswal. The fact that the government is trying to send Kashmiri Pandits back, showing that relative calm has returned. The terrorists and their backers in Pakistan don't want that sense to get perpetrated. Therefore, they are in their desperation trying to up the ante so that this entire effort to send Kashmiri Pandit families back to their homeland does not fractify. That seems to be the game at play. And by raising the kind of questions that you are, you seem to be playing into the hands of the terrorists and their backers, Mr. Sapra. See, uh, Rahul, let me tell you that the way incidents are being uh, occurring in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, if you see the record of uh, last eight days, there were seven civilians and eight uh, and five Jawans were being killed. Uh, if you see the record of last eight months, nearly 28 civilians have been killed. So this shows that somewhere uh, the existing government, there's an intelligence failure. Uh, maybe they are not uh, able to protect the borders. The borders have gone little porous because uh, there is a situation of infiltration also. And infiltration doesn't mean only the human infiltration. Uh, arms and ammunition is also coming uh, from across the border. And also the major part is the home ground militancy. Somewhere this government has failed to curtail the home ground militancy. Somewhere they have failed to curtail the radicalization camps. Camps are still being held over there in Kashmir, whereby radicalization among the youth is going on very fast. And viewing this entire situation, today people who are living in Jammu and Kashmir, they, they, they live a life of fear and horror. I have been told that people who are working in uh, government offices, uh, especially the Hindus, they have taken a long leave. And it's not only about Hindu. In the 28 civilians who have been killed, 21 were Muslims, 5 were Hindus and probably 2 were people, Hindus but not the resident of Kashmir. So this is how the situation is. This terrorist activity should be curtailed. We are with the government but government should not go into only rhetorics. They should curtail the terrorist activities. But, but Irfa Jan, would you, as would you as, concede? As far as Kashmiri Hindus are concerned, let me, let me complete. 5 seconds. Go on, go on, complete. 5 seconds. As far as the Kashmiri Hindus are concerned, this government should take initiatives of confidence building measures. The Kashmiri Pandits or the Hindus in Jammu and Kashmir should feel that yes, we are safe over here. I feel somewhere the, this current government is lacking in all these things. Irfa Jan, would you concede that the recent spate and terror attacks is on account of the fact that the terrorists don't want that a sense get created that normalcy is returning? that Kashmiri Pandits are coming back, that life is getting back on track in the valley, which is why they are trying to up the terror ante uh, rather than let normalcy return. Irfa. I uh, completely do not agree with you when you say See, that when you so. constantly talk about the, okay. yeah, when you constantly talk about the quote unquote recent spate of terror attacks. I would want to remind you Rahul that until Mr. Bindro's killings hit the headlines on all media channels, 22 civilians had already been killed this van year. So where was this normalcy something just because their killings did not make headlines does not mean everything was hunky-dory here. You should see the number of grenade attacks we have had. We had almost see a 37% increase in the grenade attacks, including in areas like Hari Singh High Street. Just because they did not make headlines does not mean there was any normalcy or there was any quote-unquote Naya Kashmir here anyway. But yes, you know, if even if you look at, you know, uh, then why was this Naya Kashmir normalcy narrative set? It was simply set to legitimize an unelected government in Jammu and Kashmir in a democracy for such a prolonged period. The idea was, listen, there is normalcy. Listen, there is Naya Kashmir. So let's, why do people need to vote, you know, if, if we have given them some, some sort of relief? And on the ground, there was no such relief. As Mr. Rana has very clearly pointed out, Every day, every year, the police comes up with a figure of around 200 militants. You know, that's like an every year thing. Last year, they said they killed 200. This year, you have 200 new recruits. It's literally a zero-sum game. Nothing has changed on ground. 
One thing, however, which I can see on ground, and you will also have the data for it, is that insurgency is now moving into areas which were for two, three years before considered to be quote unquote safe. For example, Srinagar. In Srinagar, when was the last time you heard of a terror attack, let's suppose, in Gupkar area, in Sonwar area, in Hadi Singh High Street, in Lal Chowk? We now have attacks. In Rajori, when was the last time you heard of a terror attack in Rajori? Okay, Probably let like Alan Kohli respond to the points back. that you are making. One so that radicalization of young Kashmiri boys continues. That's not come down. Your government is trying to create the specter really, that there uh, is a Naya Kashmir. But till the time radicalization yes. goes down, there is no real Naya Kashmir. It's just an artificial just picture to, uh, that I you're looking to, to create. If I'm uh, coming back to Rahul? you in just a moment, yeah. let's get to Nalin make... to respond to all of what you've said so far. Nalin Kohli, respond to Irfa Jan. My government as also your government and the government of everyone else on this panel and every Indian is working for India. It's not working for me or you or anyone else. And second is, of course, the government of the day takes the responsibility and that is what it is meant to be, to do what is in the best interest of the nation. And if they are tough decisions, they are taken where development has to be, that is also done. Mr. Raina raised a very important point. He pointed out, and it's important, that when you look at four Hindus killed out of four, the 4,000 Kashmiri Pandit, that is approximately 0.1%. That's 0.1 percent but when you look at 20 or 24 or 25 muslims killed out of the 7 million muslims who live in the kashmir valley it's 0.00028 percent so i think there is a context that everything has to be done that's why when we say it's a targeted killing it is true it's a nefarious plan this is not about a hindu or a muslim it is about terrorism coming in there to somehow stop normalcy which was building up and that and I'm, and I'm saying the government of the day will take the steps that it has to and it ha and it must why shouldn't it so therefore the intelligence failure sometimes i wonder is not really with the intelligence agencies but by political people who try to give a twist without understanding what the larger context is and so be it it doesn't matter it's part of democratic uh, discourse if I jan, but I'm you will have to accept uh, that there are global no, 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 there I'm are global me. factors at play as well. The fact that, that Pakistan is now no, I'm asking you for the fact that me. Pakistan is now comfortable on its western borders and therefore has the extra confidence of upping the heat on its eastern front is also something which is playing itself out simultaneously, which is not directly linked to what our government is doing in Kashmir or not, but linked to global factors which are impacting the current security situation. You can't go away from that, Irfa Jat. I'm sure there are I'm sure there are global factors involved, but I'm saying that let's look at the internal factors, and internal factors do not show much of a change anyway. You can go on and say this has happened, the Taliban has taken over. Please tell me, Rahul, when Krishna Daba owner's son was shot dead. We had around 32 foreign envoys sitting one kilometer away. Had Taliban taken over at that time? No, he was killed in one of the highest security zone areas. So we need to, for once in our life, see that there is a problem here. The BJP government, which has been in power in the central government for last seven years, in Jammu and Kashmir also for last seven years, one first in coalition with Mehbooba Musti government, now they're ruling directly from New Delhi. They presided over huge security failures in spite of the promises that they made. And one of the things that we're constantly asking is, why is it that after Article 370 abrogation, we don't really see a decrease in terrorism? And I would answer that question in one line. Because Article 370 abrogation was never a policy decision, Rahul. It was meant to humiliate a population. And that's what you have. You had a humiliated population, an angry population. And that's what the abrogation of Article 370 gave you. It literally had nothing to do with terrorism. I wish to answer that. When Article came to force in 1953, from 1953 to around 1989. Okay, let Nalin respond very briefly before I go across to the next ground report yeah. that I want to show. Nalin, very quickly, please. No, I, wish to, one point. I wish to answer that. I wish to answer that. I wish to answer that. It's a fascinating argument. It is a fascinating argument that is... May I answer, Rahul? Yeah, go on, It's Nalin. a fascinating argument that you take. 53 point, to 1989 is a beautiful Article yeah. 370. But now let's keep now 1989 onwards out of the picture. 
right up to the time when we saw hell mm-hmm. when we saw that genocide that took place against the kashmiri uh, uh, hindus and the pandits i mean the rape the murder everything that happened that part we must forget because it's inconvenient ifra jan al said up front the humiliation argument is a apologist argument because if that argument i believe then there is no explanation why the misuse of islam by terrorists across the world is such a huge issue and every day all religions including muslims die because of terrorists why is it that muslims suffer in muslim countries by muslims who misuse islam to blow up bombs and kill them and then send them running to other countries to settle as refugees don't build apologist act terrorism is terrorism the solution to terrorism finally lies not just in the bullet and the war that is waged against terrorism but it will lie when the majority of muslims who are who are live who want to live their lives peacefully will stop the terror factories that come by the misuse of their religion so i think that is an equally important factor well what you're saying is true but that's at some level political rhetoric on the ground your job mr kohli and your government's job is to improve the security situation and at this moment there are questions about yeah and there are questions about whether course, the security the situation itself is improving is it's not just civilians who are being targeted we also saw one of the worst ambushes on security forces in jammu and kashmir this year rattled by this, the the idea that peace could be returning to the valley pak based terrorists killed five soldiers in punch India today Sunil ji bhat reached ground zero very close to the line of control to see first hand how the forces were fighting back big terror ambush in punch five army brave hearts killed in action naib subedar jaswinder singh naik mandeep singh Sepoy Gajan Singh, Sepoy Saraj Singh, and Sepoy Vaishak, making the ultimate sacrifice, defending the nation. Fierce encounter is taking place in the forest area behind me. Yesterday, the security forces had a specific input that there is presence of terrorists in the forest area uh, here at Dera Ki Gali, and after that, a massive search operation was launched, and later on, contact was established with the terrorists, and a fierce encounter started. Based on a specific intelligence input about terrorist movement near the line of control, the army had mounted an operation in the Suran Kot area of Poonch district. late on sunday night the operation was launched by cordoning off a village as the army conducted search operations at first light ensuring no locals were hurt the terrorists opened fire on the search patrol prompting forces to retaliate four army jawans and one junior commissioned officer were critically injured in the attack by the terrorists who took advantage of rain and thick foliage The soldiers immediately extracted their injured comrades who were rushed to the nearest field hospital but succumbed there to their injuries. Reinforcements were quickly brought in and the army mounted a fierce counter strike launching a seek and destroy operation to neutralize the terrorists. The army jawans are moving towards the encounter site and our sources have told us that 3 to 5 terrorists are still holed up in the forest area. the security forces have intensified the search operation in the forest area here in rajouri and punch district the army had specific intelligence inputs about an infiltration by pakistani terrorists in the forest located close to the mughal road in suran kot subdivision pura desh apne jambaz veeron ko naman karta hai tamam aatankwadi jo sena ne gher ke rakhe hain aur jo loc से घुसपैठ करके जम्मू कश्मीर में घुसे हैं तमाम आतंकवादियों को मौत के घाट उतारेंगे सेना ने पूरे जम्मू कश्मीर को बचाने का काम किया है और पाकिस्तान की हर साजिश को हमारी सेना ने विफल किया है आप उनके ज्यादा आतंकवादी मार रहे हैं और वो भी आप हमारे लोगों को शहीद कर रहे हैं वह बात वही चल रही है क्योंकि उनको तो आतंकवादियों की कमी नहीं है भुखमरी और गरीबी इतनी है ये तब तक दूर नहीं होगा जब तक आप अपनी वर्किंग नीति को नहीं चेंज करेंगे 
the heavily armed terrorists in the Chamrer forest were waiting for their local Kashmiri guide to be taken into the Kashmir Valley when they were challenged by our forces. The security forces have been preparing for a terror spurt, anticipating a rise in infiltration attempts, especially after the Taliban takeover in Kabul, backed by Pakistan's ISI. Over the last month or so, we again see renewed attempts at infiltration. We have eliminated two or three such infiltration attempts. So yes, definitely there has been a spurt in activities, but we are prepared for uh, any such uh, eventuality. We have a very strong counter-infiltration grid to stop them at the border. We have a very strong counter-terrorism grid in the hinterland to take care of any such actions. And just as we dealt with them in the early 2000s, we will deal with them now also, should they venture anywhere near us. Poonch and other terror hotspots showing that this will be a tough autumn of bloodletting in Jammu and Kashmir. With Sunil G. Bhatt at Ground Zero in Poonch. Bureau Report, India Today. You're on board the news track. It's the one thing that millions of parents across India had been waiting for. And finally, it's here. India has got its own vaccine for children. Covaxin has got emergency use approval from the vaccine panel for children between the ages of 2 and 18. While the official nod from the drug controller is still awaited, the green light from the vaccine panel marks a huge step in the fight against the virus. India is finally getting a COVID vaccine for children. Bharat Biotech's Covaxin is recommended for emergency use approval in children between 2 and 18 years of age. The Subject Expert Committee on COVID-19 has submitted its recommendation to the Drugs Controller General of India for a final clearance. Bharat Biotech has completed Phase 2 and Phase 3 trials of Covaxin on kids below 18 in September and submitted the results early this month. The Made in India vaccine will be administered in two doses with a gap of 20 days between the first and second jab. But the emergency use authorization is subject to certain conditions. Bharat Biotech will continue its study as per the approved clinical trial protocol. It will have to provide the updated information, summary of product characteristics and fact sheet. The firm should submit safety data including the data on side effects every 15 days for the first two months. After two months, safety data must be submitted every month. While India gets its first vaccine for kids, global acceptance of indigenous vaccine is still awaited. The WHO is still to grant emergency use authorization to Covaxin. Still, adult vaccine is not approved for WHO. It's a matter of days. We have got a very good data published in very good channel. It's a matter of days. We are going to get uh, approval by WHO for adult uh, patients, as well as very soon we are going to get pediatric approval by WHO whenever the, the, the raw data is going to be in the public domain. Bharat Biotech has submitted all the data required for the listing to the WHO and approval is expected this month. We are in the process, mm -hmm. you know, we are doing whatever the WHO wants it, we are fulfilling all the requirement. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the process of the regulatory system, so we need to understand. And we both have, I mean, we have six vaccines, mm -hmm. WHO pre-qualified, it's not that we don't know the field. Vaccination for all is what uh, is the aim. So, so that is a very good thing that now we have got a vaccine approved for about two years of age. So what it can uh, have the plus side is that uh, you know you can uh, send the children outside. In August, India had granted emergency use approval to Zykov D's COVID-19 DNA vaccine for children between the age of 12 and 18. A vaccine for kids is great news for parents. Lacks of children like four-year-old Vanya Bakshi have been cooped up inside their homes for over one and a half years now. Vanya has not experienced the world of school since lockdown was announced. My child is 4 years old, so now 
हम कम से कम ये होगा कि स्कूल भेज पाएंगे क्योंकि मेरी बेटी ने अभी तक स्कूल का एनवायरनमेंट देखा ही नहीं है बहुत रिलैक्स लगता है कि हाँ वैक्सीन आ गया है तो हमारे बच्चे के लिए सेफ होगा अभी हम भी वैक्सीनेटेड है हमारा बच्चा भी वैक्सीनेटेड हो जाएगा तो एक अलग ही खुशी होगी विद मिलन शर्मा इन न्यू डेली ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे